Hello, hello, hello. What is going on, ALCC family? This is Youth Power Hour. How are you doing today? Come on, somebody. Listen, I hope that you've been having a great week so far. Hope you've been enjoying this sixth month of the year. We are smack dab in the middle of the month of June. How is your day going? Go ahead and big up yourselves in the comments, wherever you are watching from, in the New York City area or around the world. We love you here at ALCC, and we especially love you on this Youth Power Hour platform. Listen, if it's your first time here or not, please, you need to make sure you're following our IG page at Generation for Christ, all right? This is where you can get updated with anything and everything G4C that we have coming this year and beyond. I'm super excited to give you this word today. Uh, we just wrapped up our series, and, and if you were part of our G4C service on Sunday, you know uh, that we're talking on a, a sensitive and very good topic around the area of mental health, and we're going to go deeper into that today. So before we get into any of that, of course, we are going to pray. And before we pray, I need you to like this video and share this link. Whether you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, I want you to get the word of faith out there to everywhere, to everybody that you know. Let us go ahead and begin to pray. Father God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your power and might, God. We thank you for your strength, Lord. We thank you for your love, God. We just praise you, God. We thank you for your patience with us, Lord. We thank you for your mercy. There is none like you. We just glorify your holy name. How excellent is your name, Father. To you be all the honor, to be all the glory, all the power in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you for your supernatural grace and power over our life. In this ministry, Lord God, have your way in the name of Jesus, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going right to the scriptures for prayer. Listen, 2 Peter 3.17 says this, you already know these things, dear friends, so be on guard, then you will not be carried away by the errors of these wicked people and lose your own secure footing. I know I'm jumping right at the end of this chapter, but I want us to pray a special prayer here. Listen, there are some times we may deal with individuals, be it in the body of Christ or not, that may expose certain things in us that we want to keep dormant. That may bring out the flesh in us when we're trying to move spiritually. Yes, there are some times we encounter people who, if we're not on guard like this scripture says, we can also be carried away by their own error. So I want us to pray, Father, help me guard my heart from wickedness. Help me to guard my heart from wickedness in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, once again, Lord. We pray in this moment, God, that you strengthen us, that you help us guard our heart from all wickedness. You help us guard our heart from all wickedness in the name of Jesus, God. I pray, God, whenever we encounter, Lord, someone who tries to uh, bring out the worst in us, who tries to bring out the flesh in us, God, help us, oh God, help us to guard our heart. Help us to be on guard, to be ready for these situations. So these situations, though, bring us over the the line, Father. We want to keep our secure footing in you, God. We pray in the name of Jesus for new strength, God. We pray in the name of Jesus that you help us practically, spiritually to guard our heart, Father of God, in every situation, oh God, for every moment, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God. Help us to guard our heart, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, Matthew 6, 24 says this, no one can serve two masters for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to your own finances. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to your family. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to sports. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to your job. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to anything else. You cannot serve two masters. For a lot of us, we have different things in our hearts that's competing with God. We have different things in our lives that's competing for that number one place in our heart with God. And you cannot serve two masters. This prayer looks different for each and every one of us. It looks different for me as it does for you. So I want you to pray, Father, break my heart away from what's competing with you. Break my heart away from what's competing with you. Now listen, there's certain good things that you, sh you should definitely have a heart for, but whatever is in that front place, whatever is competing with the Lord, you need to bring that into the background. So pray this prayer. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you break our heart away, oh God, from whatever is competing, oh God, in our heart with you, in the 
the name of Jesus, oh God. We come against, oh God, whatever is competing, be it, be it good things or even bad things, Father God. Be it things of the flesh, oh God. Be it things of sin nature, oh God, or practical things that you even want us to have, Father God. We break away from the hold that it has in our heart, God. We decree and declare today that we do not serve two masters. We do not serve two masters. We serve you. You are our Lord and Savior, Father. And we decree and declare today, God, that, that you are number one in our hearts. You are number one in our lives. So, God, we pray that we break off, we break away whatever hold, whatever control that anything else has in our life in the name of Jesus. Whatever is competing, yes, Lord. Yes, God, I, I come against God. Those whose hearts, oh God, are competing with you and love for other people, God. Or you or money, God. You or their job. You or their family. You or, or sports. You or, uh, or, or games on their phone, Father God. We come against that right now. Yes, God, I come against. Uh, I pray people, in fact, I pray people begin to see what is in their heart that is competing against you. Lord, I pray people begin to see what is in their heart that's competing against you in the name of Jesus. Father God, show us where our time, talent, and treasure is being drawn away from you. Show us where our time, talent, and treasure is being drawn away from you. Yes, Lord. Yes, God, no matter what age we are, no matter what age are, God, no matter what we may be consumed with, God, reveal to us what is competing with your love, what is competing for your love, what's competing in the heart for you, God. And we pray now that you give us the strength to break away from it. We pray now that you give us the strength to break away from it, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I want to read this scripture here. 1 John 2, from 3 to 6, it says this. And we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. If someone claims, I know God, but does not obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and is not giving in, uh, not living in the truth. But those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. This is how we know we are living in him. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. I want us to pray the prayer, and the prayer is strengthen me in obedience. The prayer is to strengthen me in obedience. But listen, I want you to understand this. What you cannot pray is, God, make me obedient. That is not the prayer we're praying. You cannot pray, God, make me obedient. God cannot just simply make you obedient. Obedience is a choice. Obedience is a choice. Obedience is on you. God will forever and always do his part. But what he's calling you to, the choice is on you to be obedient. So you can't pray, God, oh, just make me obedient to your will. No, it's strengthen me in obedience for to, to be obedient in the hard thing to be obedient in the easy thing to be obedient in the in the not even so short thing god cannot make you obedient it's a choice you have to make so you need to pray for that strength for that strength to be obedient so let's pray that right now father we pray in the name of jesus god that you strengthen us in obedience that you strengthen us in obedience in the name of jesus lord we understand and know it's a choice god i pray right now lord that people receive strength, oh God, to be obedient to your will, to be obedient to your commands, to be obedient to your word, Father, in the name of Jesus. As you're leading us in our daily lives, Lord, we pray, God, for a new level, a new grace, a new strength to be obedient, Father. A new level, a new strength, a new grace to be obedient, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the small thing, in the big thing, in the little thing, in the hard thing, oh God. Yes, God, we pray for just a new strength, God, a new grace in obedience, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. God, we pray for a new awareness of your voice, a new awareness of your leading. Father, yes, it's easy to obey you when we know what you're saying, God. So I pray for those who are having a hard time discerning your voice. We pray for supernatural clarity in the name of Jesus, supernatural clarity of purpose, supernatural clarity of power, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, we even pray, God, that your healing virtue flow right now in the name of Jesus, that your healing power flow now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We speak supernatural healing wherever anyone is at right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Healing to any foot pain, yes, to any heel pain in the name of Jesus, God. to Anyone who's Achilles, oh God, needs healing. We speak a, a, a restoration, God. We speak an end to that stiffness in the name of Jesus. We release our faith in this moment. Let your healing virtue flow. Let your healing power flow, Father, in the name of Jesus. May they meet whoever is watching now, whoever is listening, oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we praise you. We raise 
praise you, God. We give you all the glory. We give you all the power, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, somebody. Give God a shout of praise. Give him some glory wherever you're watching right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Listen. I want to get straight into this today. So go ahead, like I said earlier, if you're just joining, go ahead and share this link. Put it on your WhatsApp story. Drop it in the group chat. Share it to the person you haven't spoken to today at all. Doesn't matter. Don't don't put no, no, don't even put any warning. Just share it. Let the word of faith on this platform bless someone else. I'm going to read this scripture text, seven verses, and then we'll get into the word for today. From Genesis chapter 4, verse 3 to 10, and it says, this, when it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Abel also brought a gift, the best portions of the firstborn lands from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry and he looked dejected. Why are you angry, the Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you, but you must subdue it and be its master. One day, Cain suggested to his brother, let's go out to the fields. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Afterward, the Lord asked Cain, where's your brother? Where's Abel? I don't know, Cain responded. Am I my brother's guardian? Then the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Amen. Now listen, if you were at our G4C services Sunday, we preach from this same scripture text, a message called Speechless. And I encourage you, I implore you to go ahead and watch that if you have not, be it right now or later on tonight, that message will be a blessing to you as well. And we're on this topic, we're in this time frame, not even just talking about mental health, but what I like to even call it in, in, in a better, uh, you know, two words I rather, I rather use is emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence. It is imperative that as a human being, no matter you be five years old, 55 years old, 85 years old, be male or female, you need to have emotional intelligence. You need to have emotional intelligence. I'm not going to preach on what we talked about on Sunday, but part of the, our issue in this world, in this culture, in this society, and not having emotional intelligence is the fact that we are rendered speechless when we shouldn't be. A fact is the issue is our communication. In this story here, Cain and Abel, um, they gave the gift to God, their offer to God. Cain was not accepted. Abel was. And Abel, uh, Cain, of course, had an issue with that. And God simply asked him, why are you angry? Why do you look deje dejected? Cain's issue is he never responded to God. He never responded to God. And because he didn't respond, he went off and did something completely stupid. Because he was speechless and did not know how to uh, navigate his own emotions in that moment, he, he, he ended up doing something completely costly. And your silence will either kill you or kill someone else, kill something else in your life. Quite simply, what Cain should have said is, I'm weak. What Cain should have said, which is the title for this word today, is I'm weak. I am weak. If we can simply come to the Lord in full transparency, in full honesty, in full vulnerability, in times in our life, in the various different situations in our life, no matter it's sin related or whatever it may be, and simply come to the Lord and tell him, hey God, I am weak. He will give you strength. One of the biggest issues and reasons why people render themselves speechless, don't communicate, don't share, don't, don't have people, uh, uh, don't, don't pray about certain things, or don't have people into their life in a certain way, because so many people are afraid to admit that they are weak. So many people are, are, are too ashamed to show that they have a Weakness is to show that something in their life is actually not going as they wanted it to be. That something in their life is actually going wrong. If we can come to God humbly and show that we are weak, then we can always receive strength. He will always give us strength. 
I, I talked about it, like I said, in the message on Sunday where we talk about being speechless. Part of people's issue when it comes to emotional intelligence, hey, you don't let anybody in. You, you, you don't allow people to understand and see that you are weak in certain areas, that you are weak when certain things are pre pre presented before you. You are weak in certain conversations. You are weak when you watch certain things on social media. And because you don't share and give that weakness to the Lord or sharing that weakness and that burden to someone else, it constantly puts you in the same cycle day in and day out. It constantly leaves you in the same bubble day in and day out. And if you do not practice venting, if you do not practice talking to the Lord and to others, this can lead to a big problem. Like I said on Sunday, the simple uh, uh, art of venting, the reason why it's called venting, when you speak and just vent and go on about certain things because you are, you are, you are allowing your mind to vent out and ventilate your system, whatever you're thinking, all your thoughts through your mouth to get everything out there. As scripture says, Psalms 55, 22, cast and give all your burdens to the Lord. And then in Galatians 6, 2, it says, hey, share in the burdens of other believers because you were meant to bear burdens, but not yours. You, you, were, you were meant to hold on and share and help build someone else else's a weakness and soft spot, but not yours. A lot of people are bearing their own burdens and it's too heavy because you were never meant to bear it. Give it to the Lord, give it to somebody else and allow God to not only just forgive you, not only just to make things right in your life, but to get healing in your confession with other people. But that only starts where you can simply confess that you are weak. I'm not sure who's listening or watching right now, but can you see and realize an area, a moment in your life where you have a weakness, an area, a moment in your life where you have an insecurity, an area, a moment, a place in your life where you know, hey, listen, I am too weak to handle this right now. When I'm presented with this opportunity, I get angry. When I'm presented with this opportunity, I get horny. When I'm presented this opportunity, I, I tend to want to steal something. You need to be able to understand and know your weakness and be able to bring it to the Lord. Because when you come humbly and weak before him, he gives you strength. He gives you strength. Can you imagine... Can you imagine if Cain actually came to the Lord and, and when God asked him in that verse 6 and 7, hey, why are you so angry? Why do you look dejected? And he'll say, God, honestly, I'm weak. I'm upset. I'm angry because, you know, you accepted Abel's gift. You didn't accept mine. What happens, uh, uh, what happens to a lot of us is instead of showing off our weakness, we keep it in the dark just like Cain did. And just as God told him, hey, listen, if you keep these things hidden, sin is waiting to control you. And you must be its master. But if you don't allow things to be exposed in God's light, you do not have the power or the strength to control it. If you do not allow yourself to expose your weakness, your temptation, whatever your issue is, into God's light, you do not have the power to subdue it or control it. It can continuously and grow in its power over you. So my question to you is who are you telling that you are? weak. Who are you telling that you are weak? I hope, my hope and my prayer is that you can first go to the Lord in full confession that you are weak. My hope and my prayer is that you can go to God and, and not condemn yourself and not be too prideful to and, 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 and be able to be transparent, honest, vulnerable, and open to tell God, hey God, I am weak in this area. And then I really hope what's really important that you find people to do that with as well. Do that too as well. Yes, I'm, uh, uh, yes, people should, you know, there's nothing wrong with, what's the word I'm looking for? There's nothing wrong with, with finding counseling or finding therapy, you know, uh, um, outside the church. But hey, if, if, if the body of Christ is doing their job correctly, we should be able to give you both the spiritual and the practical of how to navigate yourself from point A to point B. The, the, the question that God asks uh, Cain and the question that God asks even Adam in Genesis chapter 3, that is a therapeutic question of, hey, where are you mentally? How did you get here mentally? Why are you so angry? So, so there's nothing really against the, the thought process of therapy. However, if you have the right people around you, if you have the right people in the body of Christ doing their job to give you both a spiritual and practical sense of things, you should be set. Who are you telling that you are weak? Are you allowing God to see that and allowing other men and women in the body of Christ that you are running this race of life with as well to see and know and hear that you 
are weak. First thing I want you to write down is very, very simple. Please stop trusting yourself. Please stop trusting yourself. A lot of times we do not admit that we are weak because we believe we can do bad and handle everything all by ourselves. When we try to do bad all by ourselves, we just look bad all by ourselves. We need people in our lives. We need the Lord in our lives. We are meant for various relationships. We need people to hold us accountable and let them know that, hey, listen, I'm weak when it comes to certain things. Proverbs, uh, not Proverbs, Proverbs 3, uh, 5 to 6 says this, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. Please stop trying to trust yourself. It is so much better in life when you're trusting God in every way he's leading you and not trying to trust in your own wisdom, not trying to trust in your, in your own self. Allow, God, allow yourself to put your full faith and trust in God and stop trusting yourself in certain situations that, that, that you think you're strong enough to, to, to deal with certain temptations. You think you're, you're strong enough to, to, uh, to not flip to certain channels or not to steal money or, or, or to control your emotions. No, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in what God says in, in it for every moment. Trust in God's word over your life. Trust in God's leading over your life. And do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he shall direct your path. One thing I love, people say this all the time. Hey, listen, even when God gives you deliverance, avoidance is not deliverance. And that is true. Avoidance is not deliverance. But there is wisdom in avoidance. Someone, uh, you, you, you should be able to, to have the wisdom to avoid certain things and not trust yourself in certain places, to not trust yourself around certain people, to not trust yourself in certain environments. And because you have that wisdom, you stay away because you know, hey, I'm not strong enough to be here right now. I'm not strong enough to watch this right now. I'm not strong enough to stand here right now because I honestly am weak. And that is okay because when you speak on it, when you, when you are able to bring that to the light, he can give you strength. The problem is when people begin to trust themselves, they teeter, totter, flirt with certain lines and fall off the edge. Samson was a man who trusted in his own strength. Samson was a man who trusted in, hey, I did this before yesterday. I could do it again today. And he ended up not only blind, but bald and bound. He ended up blind, bald, and bound. Do not trust in yourself. Please, very practically, very simply, stop trusting in yourself. What you need to do is rely on God's grace. What you quite simply need to do in your life is rely on God's grace. 2 Corinthians 12, 8 to 9, it says this, three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. Should I let that part marinate? My power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. Listen, his grace is not just an option. It's a necessity. God's grace is not just an option in your life. It's a necessity. You actually need his grace in the areas that you are weak. My grace is all you need. And you can't receive the Rebbe, you, you can't receive, I'll say like this, you can't receive grace without the revelation of you knowing that you need it. You cannot receive grace without the revelation, without the understanding, without the, the supernatural eye-opening awaking that you need it. And the only way you can receive grace in those areas of your weakness is if you bring those weakness forward to him and allow him to put his grace on it. His grace is all that you need and his power works best in your weakness. His power works best in your weakness. Listen, you can't get strong without exposing your struggle. You cannot get strong without exposing your struggle. That is classic, very practical understanding textbook to life. You will never in life 
get strong anywhere without going through the struggle of getting stronger and exposing and showing parts that you're weak. Those, when, when you see someone who's an athlete, who's a bodybuilder, someone who's been in the gym and, and you can physically see evidence on, on, on their, you know, in their physical nature about that, it's not just them going to the gym and showing off with easy repetition that, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm strong. Well, what it takes to gain strength is to actually go through the struggle in certain weights when you're lifting it because it's in that struggle that you're actually getting stronger. If there's no struggle in the situation, you're just massaging your muscles. You're not, you're not doing anything. There's no gain in strength. But you can only get strong when you expose where you are weak, when you expose the struggle within you. So if you're able to expose it to the Lord, that, hey, I am weak here. Be able to expose it to others for accountability. Hey, I am weak here. You'll be able to gain strength. Give it to God and give it to others. Give your weakness to the Lord and give it to others. I already mentioned that just earlier and I mentioned it uh, in a message on Sunday. Psalms 55, 22, give the burdens unto God. That is your vertical. I mean, yes, that's your vertical confession. Now, horizontally, as Galatians 6 tells you, give it to others and allow righteous men and women of God to pray into your life, to be there in accountability, to be there practically, to help you in your weakness. You cannot get strong without exposing your struggle. You cannot gain strength without exposing that struggle. And a lot of people don't want to talk about their weakness. But you need to begin to today if you have not already. And a lot of people say because it's, it's in the Word, hey, there's, there's, there's wisdom in silence. And that is very true. But not all silence is wisdom. There, there, there is time where there's wisdom in silence. But silence completely on an issue in the area where you are weak, that's not wisdom. That's not what the Lord or the word is calling you to do. Stop hiding the struggle. It's time that you expose it. You are only as strong as your weakest link. That's what people say. You are only as strong as your weakest link. And you know what the scripture says? Can I read the scripture for you again? Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in your weakness. So... So now I'm glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of God, the power of Christ can work through me. If you're only as strong as your weakest link, this scripture is letting us know that God is trying to link his grace to your weakness. God is trying to link his grace to your weakness. And you are only as strong as your weakest link. But if you allow that weak link in your life, the temptation issue that you deal with, the, the attraction issue that you deal with, the lust issue that you deal with, the stealing issue that you deal with, the, the, the depression issue that you, that you deal with, if you allow His grace to be linked there, you will be stronger there. His grace is all you need there. But guess what? No weakness, no strength. No levels of weakness, no strength from His grace. No levels of weakness and humility, no strength from his grace. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the people of God, uh, so that the power of God can work through me. And I love verse 10. That's why I take pleasure in my weakness. And in the insults, and in the hardships, and in the persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The best way to be a believer in Jesus Christ is to be consciously aware of your weakness. The best way to be strong as a believer in Jesus Christ is to be consciously aware of your weakness and be able to quite simply call a spade a spade and say, hey, I'm weak in this area. Lord, I need your help. Hey, I'm weak in this area. Hey, I need you to pray for me. Hey, I'm weak in this area. I need the proper boundaries up. The best way to be a powerful, strong believer in Jesus Christ is to be extremely conscious of the areas where you are weak. Can you be real with yourself and say, hey, listen, you know what? When it comes to this depression issue, I'm, I'm weak. When it comes to 
financially trying to balance my life. I'm weak when it comes to trying to work this anger and, and, and issues I'm having. I'm weak. Can you come humbly to the Lord and say that? And can you find accountabilities in others as well? I'll close with this and I'll let you know this. Three times Paul prayed for God to remove whatever thorn he had. And God, Jesus himself, because it's written in red, says, hey, listen, my grace is all you need. This is the same Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane who felt like he didn't have what it took as well to die on the cross, who had to show levels of weakness and humility to the Lord in the garden three times going back to pray, saying, Father, this is too much for me. I am weak for this, but not my will, yours be done. And him being strengthened in that moment. Because for Paul, hey, the thorn was not removed. And for you, hey, possibly the, the thorn may never be removed, but his grace is all you need. Can you allow that grace to move and work in your life. So I want us to pray right now. I want us to pray that, that, that we just expose and show God our weakness and ask that he pours grace on us and we are strong in that area, that he pours grace on us and we receive strength to get by, that he pours grace on us and we receive strength to move according to his will in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray in this moment, Lord. God, we pray in the name of Jesus, God. God, I pray that you even open up our eyes, oh God, to, 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 to show each and every one of us our weakness. Maybe some of us don't even know the areas we are weak in, God. I pray that you expose and show us these weakness in the name of Jesus, Lord. We come humbly before you right now. We come humbly before you in this moment, Father God. Yes, God, crying for strength, oh God. Crying for strength, to draw strength from you, God. We come humbly and say, hey, we are weak in this area. We are weak in this issue. We are weak in this temptation. We are weak in this situation, Father God. And we are asking for strength. We are asking for strength. We are asking for grace. God, we pray right now, Lord, that we receive a fresh deposit of grace from you in the name of Jesus. That we receive a fresh deposit of grace from you right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Yes, God, grace to finally be strong in our issues. Grace to finally be strong with the temptations. Grace to finally be strong, oh God, in, in our own mind in the name of Jesus Christ of oh God. Yes, God, strengthen us, O oh Lord. Yes, God, release your grace upon us. Release your grace upon us, Lord. Release your grace upon us in this moment. Release your grace upon us in this moment, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. With this new strength, God, we shall do your will. With this new strength, we shall work on purpose. With this new strength, Father God, we shall walk in power in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray, God, that people are able to get to the point of humility in transparency and honesty in your own presence, Father God, to say that they are weak, to show that they are weak in the name of Jesus. I pray that they can even be that transparent with fellow men and women in the body of Christ, with fellow men and women in the body of Christ, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Strengthen us, Father God, to expose and show our struggle of weakness, Father, so we can receive grace from you, so we can receive strength from you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, God, and we pray for anyone, oh Lord, who wants to, to give their life and their heart to you in this moment. God, we pray for those hearts who, who are looking to return back to you. We pray for those hearts, Father God, who are looking to know you as Lord and Savior right now. God, as they are releasing the faith to know you and claim you as Lord and Savior, God, fill them, Lord. Come into their hearts right now. Fill them with your spirit in the name of Jesus and change their life forever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, somebody, give God a shout of praise. Have you been blessed by today's word? Listen, if you just gave your life to Christ, go ahead and text SAVED. To, uh, that's S-A-V-E-D. Go ahead and text it to 718-312-2253. First, I want to say congratulations. Then again, text SAVED. That's S-A-V-E-D to 718-312-2253. Come on, somebody. Have you been blessed today? Listen, go ahead, like this video, share it, put it on your platforms. Let the word of faith on this platform be a blessing to someone else. Come on, listen. Quick 
few announcements for you, all right? Uh, as stated on Sunday, we are doing an IG takeover tomorrow to discuss issues on mental health, on emotional intelligence. Hey, for you to, for, for some of you, finally a place to expose your weakness and get it off of your chest and give it to other believers. Be ready for the IG takeover tomorrow. If you're not following us on the IG, follow us at Generation for Christ. Follow us at Generation for Christ right now. In fact, you should be tagging us every time you watch YPH on your platforms and tagging Generation for Christ as well. But be ready for that tomorrow and let others know about it as well. Listen, this Saturday for any man here at ALCC, we are having our M2M, like Pastor Festa said on Tuesday. Our M2M hangout, our man, man-to-man hangout, that'll be this Saturday at 10 a.m. Do not miss it. Yes, we're going to be at 32 East 98th Street. It's going to be a great time of empowerment, of fun and games. You know the table tennis will be there, so you know if you're that type of person, you better show up as well. It will be a powerful, fun time. You do not want to miss it. And of course, on Sunday is Father's Day. Sunday is Father's Day, and we are having a special service on Sunday. All right, our first and second service on practical keys on literally restoring the sonship uh, and, 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 and fathership, if I can say that, uh, in households, restoring and reconnecting children to parents, really honestly bringing families back together, restoring unity, restoring relationships. Listen, you do not want to miss it. If you are anybody of any age, man or woman, parent, child, be at our first two services. We will not be having our third service, our G4C service, because everyone should either be in the first or second service to hear this powerful word that we're going to bring forth. You do not want to miss it at all. And lastly, lastly, I'll say we have our Summer Bash Barbecue coming up June 25th. Our Summer Bash Barbecue is June 25th at 1 p.m. This is after marathon service. All right, this is going to be in our garage as well. Food, games, everything you need to kick off the summer. As you see on the flyer, the fee is $5 as well. So begin to pay that as soon as possible. And invite all your friends, invite anyone you want. We're kicking off the summer. We're going to have a good time there as well. That is it. That's all the announcements for today. Listen, I pray you go in power. You can only go in power once you say that you are weak. So God bless you. And remember... It is your story for His glory.